Hi. So today I'm going to answer Maddie's question. Uh, Maddie wrote about feeling, dealing with the feeling of weight gain. And but first, I have to. We have to talk. We have to talk to. Oh, he's not going to come over. Stinky, call me here. We have to talk to Stinky first. Oh my god, this cat is just the most adorable thing. He's just so fluffy. Oh, stinky. Anyway. So, Maddie wrote about the feeling of weight gain, and um, so things like feeling his thighs touch, and she said that she's not even sure that she doesn't like, you know, it's about her, her not liking her body, it's just that her, the feeling of weight gain then sort of niggles and brings up all of these thoughts about weight gain, and um, all right, so I've got more water with me in case I have a coughing fit. My brain did the same thing. Remember, like my personally for me, I actually didn't like being thin. But that's a that's this part of the brain didn't like me being friend. This part of my brain was like, huh, you look like shit. This part of the brain, brain stem area, still had fear of weight gain. So therefore, I still acted as if I didn't want to gain weight, despite this part of my brain actually wanting to gain weight. So that's the that's the pro. The, you know, that's some some for some people, this part of the brain doesn't want to gain weight either. But for quite a few of us, actually, we don't like being massively underweight or thin or even a little bit underweight. We know that we look like shit. Um, so I wanted, logically, to gain weight. And then when I worked out that I had to force myself to act as if I needed to gain weight, even if the another part of my brain didn't want that to happen, I did start to gain weight. I ate loads of food, gain weight. And this part of my brain was like, well, thank fuck, you don't look like Skeletor anymore. Um... But another part of my brain was like, you know, the fear of weight gain part didn't like that very much. Anyway, so what happened was as um, things like when when your brain is used to your body being a certain way, then that's homeostasis and the brain sits there. And then when something changes, when something is different from homeostasis, it's actually your brain's job to draw attention to that. So, for example... If you have an accident and you cut your finger off, for quite a while, your brain is going to draw attention to that and be like, human, there's no finger there anymore. Multiple times a day, your brain's going to draw attention to that. And then, at some point, that's going to become the new norm. And your brain will stop drawing attention to that. It's a bit like that with this tattoo, actually. I always forget I even have this tattoo. And people are always like, oh, tell me about your tattoo. And I'm like, what tattoo? Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, Whereas when I first got the tattoo, because it was different, my brain was not used to seeing this huge thing on my hand, my brain kept on drawing attention to it. And every multiple times a day, I'd be like, fuck, I've got this huge tattoo on my hand. Um, My brain did the same thing, say, with the disappearance of the thigh gap that I had when I was underweight. My thighs did not touch. My brain got used to that. My brain thought that that was the norm. And then... As I gained weight, my thighs started to touch when I walked. And because that was different, because that was a change from the norm, my brain did its job and drew my attention to that. And my brain kept on saying, human, your thighs are touching. And part of my brain didn't like that. So my, my brain doing its job and drawing my attention to the fact that something had changed then gave the part of my brain that was afraid of weight gain a chance to jump in and go, and that's bad. So there's two different things going on here. One is the observation. Your brain just made an observation that your thighs don't touch anymore. That's neutral. That's just your brain doing a job and being like, human, something changed. Brain doing its job, good. Then another part of my brain, eating disorder part of my brain, fear of weight gain part, jumps in and sabotages that innocent observation and goes, and that's bad. We have a chance here in the middle to stop that sabotage happening. And that's what we need to do. So when your brain makes the observation, you've got like a split second before your eating disorder part, your brain jumps in and sabotages it and says, and it's a bad thing to go. And it's good. You've got to jump in there first. You've got to preempt that your eating disorder brain is going to jump in there with its opinion. And you've got to get there first. And so that's what I just started to do. (coughs) Sorry. When... My thighs touched or my arm brushed my side and felt flesh on my butt or my thigh that hadn't been there before. And my brain went, human, there's a change here. 
I'd be like, thanks, brain, and it's good. It's a good change. It's a good change. And I'd just play that over in my head and drown out the part of my brain was going, blah, 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 game, wait, blah, 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 it's bad, my life, everyone knows it, game, wait, you know, all that shit. So, and, and that's just what I did. And then eventually what does happen is your brain, because your recovered body becomes the new norm, your brain stops alerting you every time that flesh touches flesh. And so the whole problem goes away eventually. But that's, it's going to, what's going to happen in recovery a lot is that your brain will make an observation and then your eating disorder brain will jump in with its opinion about it. And you've got to be ready for that. It's going to happen a heck of a lot in recovery. And so you've got to be prepared and you've got to know that's going to happen because you do know it's going to happen, don't you? And you've got to have a little bit of a plan to be like, all right, when this happens, I know that this is going to happen next, so I'm going to jump in and not let section B happen. You know, if part A is my brain just just noticing something, it's allowed to do that, but part B is my eating to sort of jump in and, and turning it into a negative thing. Part A is allowed to happen. Part B, we've got to do something. We've got to actually take a, a mental step in there to prevent that from happening. It's like... Like, that's probably the extent of the algebra that I could ever accomplish. If something is A and then the other thing is B, don't let B happen. I, I couldn't get more complicated than that in these equations. But if I was able to manage that, then you're able to manage that as well. And you, you as you go through recovery, just like Maddie identified this thing that our brain's doing. Brain recognises that, notices that I've gained weight by, by something physical touching and then something bad, like my brain then has all this, this stuff about it. And I don't even know. Maddie didn't even know like if she's uncomfortable with the weight gain or not. But stuff's going on. Recognizing that is like first part when you can recognize, oh, this, my brain's doing this weird thing. As soon as you've identified it, that gives you the option to be able to alter the path that your brain is taking. So, yeah, hope that helps, Maddie. Bye. <laughs>